for us to see complex chemical and electrical reactions must take place in the proper sequences. Biologists tell us that the human eye's photochemistry is so fast that the first reaction takes place in one five billionth of a second. Discover more fascinating features of the visual system which defy Darwin's theory of random natural processes. Coming up on today's edition of Origins, Behold His Beauty with Dr. Randy Galusa. Hello and welcome to Origins. I'm Ray Heipel. It's an honor to be your host today. During this program, we showcase interesting guests who present evidence from science, along with other important facts, validating the truth of creation and the accuracy of the Bible. Today's guest, Dr. Randy Galuza, has undergraduate degrees in engineering and theology. He has earned an MD and also a Master of Public Health from Harvard University. Dr. Galuza is a registered professional engineer. In 2008, he retired as Lieutenant Colonel from the U.S. Air Force. Now he's the president for the Institute for Creation Research in Dallas. Welcome to the program, yeah. Dr. Galuza. Thank you so very much, Ray. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm fascinated by this title, Behold His Beauty. What do we mean by that? Well, we're going to be talking about the eye today, and we're going to be talking about things that we see are beautiful, but in this case, we're going to be able to look at creation and see the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ in another aspect, in that thing which He has made and which we all love, the human eye. So everything that God has made should point back to Him as its maker. And well, when we think about the eye, the thing by which we see, uh, we don't often really think about, well, God made that eye, and therefore the eye should say something to us about who God is. It does. It does. It, it really says a lot about His genius. It says a lot about His wisdom as well. In fact, I even have a, a hypothesis right here that worship should be the normal response to not just great preaching mm -hmm. and not great music, but worship should be the normal response to science, something that we don't normally think of. And I'm sure you're familiar with that verse right there. Yes. It says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I know you've said it and I've said it and all of us have talked about how wonderfully made we are. But, you know, we never say the whole verse because when we put the whole verse together, it actually begins with this. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, mm. and my soul knows this greatly. So science, what, whereby we, we get knowledge, should lead to worship. When we start to learn and understand how we're made, that should cause us to fall down on our knees before our maker and say, wow. That's right, that's right, because it is so just mind-boggling mm. complex, mm. and it is just absolutely astounding to see, as we even look at when we just get right into the human eye. So I'm going to make a prediction that at the end of our, our show here, that people should be saying inside their heart, praise the Lord mm -hmm. just by looking at the human eye and all those things. And this gentleman here that we have on the screen, um, he's a man who all of us who have gone to medical school have seen his pictures. His name is Dr. Netter. And I'm going to use some of his pictures today. That's actually a painting, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's not a photograph. That's a wonderful painting of a cross-section through the human eye, and I wanted to make sure he got the credit for some of the pictures that I, I gave. His name was Dr. Frank Netter, and we're going to be looking at several of his paintings today that I, dis, that I actually studied when I was in medical school. So it all begins with, as you can tell, light, light. And so a lot of people wonder, what in the world are we even talking about mm. when we talk about light? And nobody knows exactly what light is. Is it a wave? Is it a particle? But we do know it's energy. It's pure energy and obviously it moves at the highest speed in the in the universe which is the speed of light and it's vibrations there and it's 
how that light reflects off different features and the different wavelengths is what enables us to see these wonderful colors or in black and white along those lines. And it all begins with the eye and the eye is there to collect the light, but the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of what we're really after is information. When you're looking at me, you're actually collecting a lot of information and I'm collecting the same from you. How is all of that happening? It doesn't happen in the eye. It happens with multiple parts around your eye and with your eye and with your brain and all of those things. So what we're going to get to by the end of this program is the collection of information. So we start with this data, this light that's coming in through these receptors, but that's just data, that's not information. We don't, we don't have any th way to process that, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, these receptors, as you call them, in really many ways, um, they're, they're really a sensor. They're a high-tech sensor, mm -hmm. uh, much, much better than anything any humans have made, a detector, and they begin developing right about the time a woman would recognize that she is pregnant. Mm -hmm. And about that time, little embryo, as you can see on the screen right there, has already started to form its little eye in what's called an optic cup. That's in the drawing there on the left-hand side, which um, actually makes it a little easier to see there. But over on the right-hand side is a picture of a real human embryo at about that right time. And right where it says on the picture there, lens plaque code is where the eye is beginning to develop. And you can see other things there, heart, and it even calls it a tail on that. And that's because um, these pictures are drawn by evolutionists, and we're going to even talk about that in just a second. <laughs> it's they not really a tail, yeah, is it? It's not no. even close to a tail. Uh -huh. that's, uh -huh. a, that's a tail in and of itself right there, <laughs> a tall tail. Yes. But you know what's fascinating is, as you begin as a little embryo, you actually self-construct inside your mother. It starts as a single cell, and there's a program in there, and there's information in there, and it begins to build itself. Can you imagine mm -hmm. how much engineering it takes to make a self-constructing entity that starts off of a single cell and slowly and gradually builds it up, and then the cells change into just the right cells for a heart or for your kidneys, and some of these are going to change into your eye, and there's three layers of tissue that are being built up, and as you can see there on the right-hand side of the screen, that eye is actually going to self-construct by some of that tissue infolding up on itself and making a cup. And then another layer of completely different tissue, as you can see there, is gonna be pulled into that cup and it's gonna break off and it's gonna become the lens. And then the lens is gonna send signals out to other tissue and it's all gonna to start to self-grow into an eye. And what's cool is you see down there on the lower left, you see those blood vessels that are holding that lens in place. You know what those are acting like? No. Just like scaffolding in the construction of a building. Oh, wow. <laughs> in fact, here's that, that tall tale. Right here, it's, this picture was taken from the book on biological science, and it said this. For example, the human embryo has a well-developed tail and also a series of gill pouches <laughs> in the pharyngeal region. Those little folds of skin, you know, they were never gills. They yeah. never have gill tissue. And what about that other thing? It says human and fish embryos resemble each other because human beings and fish share a common ancestry like that tail. Wow. But that is never a tail. Your body grows into that backbone. It's never a tail, Are never functions like a tail. still say yes. this? Wow. They do. They still teach this. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it's totally absurd. But fortunately, baby develops, and by birth, believe it or not, eyes are at 75% of their adult size, and by the end of the first year, they're 90% of their adult size. And that's because baby is going to use that data that's being brought in by those eyes in order to develop on all those things. So the eye needs to be developed very quickly because everything else is dependent upon that, exactly. that data that eventually, we're going to say, turns into information somehow. Ray, you are absolutely right. There is a lot more to seeing than just the eyeball. In fact, eyelids don't even get a lot of recognition, but without them, we would all be blind. As you can see, they protect the eye very, very well, but they also have a lot of different structures in there that produce oils, 
that lubricates your eye. Every time you're blinking right now, you would like that lubrication. They're producing tears to help you also see and smooth out your cornea. So there are a lot of structures. In fact, if we were to look inside of an eyelid, as you can see here right on the screen, this is, a, this is an artist's rendition and it's blown up. There's tiny muscles inside of there. There's dense connective tissue, which give it the shape that we all like. And inside of that, there's even a gland which produces that oily compound, which is excreted right through a tiny little pore right here on the end of the eyelid. So eyelids are absolutely essential, and I like to see them get some credit because the Lord made them. And besides, they're kind of beautiful to look at in all of those things. You know, that's true. And, and I mean, as we think about the eye, and the eye is incredibly complex, and comparatively speaking, the eyelid is much less, and yet just looking at the eyelid, um, that, that's enough to make you want to praise the Lord. And again, both of these things having to develop together, work together, all this by random chance. Right, exactly. That's it. And so when the Lord makes things, He makes them functional, but He also makes them quite beautiful as well. And we can even blow that up a little bit more. And this is what, this is actually a piece of human tissue from someone who had a piece of their eyelid removed, and now we can look inside of it. You see the outer skin on the outside, and then even inside, that's the tiny little muscle tissue that we talked about. This is the gland, and as you can see there, there's little oil droplets. That oil will be secreted right here, right through this little pore on the end of it. And in fact, we can even look at this, and we can realize that this is probably an eyelid of a woman because they can put makeup on them and decorate them and adorn them, and we just like looking at all the things that the Lord has made. You know, it's interesting because the Proverbs talk about, you know, warning a young man not to be uh, beguiled by the woman with her eyes. Right. Isn't that interesting yeah. that there's something in us that is attracted to looking at someone else's eyes? Now, here's something that isn't quite as beautiful, but as, as necessary as those eyelids and that is the tear production. So this is one of those pictures by Frank Netter, and it's like a cutaway view inside, looking at the lacrimal gland right up there on the bony part of your eye. That produces your watery tears that are gonna go through tiny pores and they're going to float over your eye. But in addition to that, they're going to be absorbed through this little tiny gland right here, this duct. And that's going to collect all those tears and it's going to recycle them down the back of your throat. So what in the world do these tears do for us? Well, they help lubricate the eye as we are blinking. They contain mucus, they contain enzymes, they contain antibodies. They help protect your eye from infections, from viruses or bacteria along those lines. In addition to that, humans shed emotional tears. In fact, we're the only creature that sheds emotional tears. Are there any function to them? Like, do they do any cleaning or is it just an emotional Well, response? they do have a function. In fact, the Lord provided us something that these emotional tears, and it's only the tears that are shed when we're upset, not the tears that you might shed if you cut an onion, which are a little bit different chemical compound, but the tears that you shed when you're upset, they contain a compound called enkephalins, which are like natural opiates they are absorbed systemically and they give you a feeling of relief. So crying or weeping actually will help you to um, get back to not grieving anymore. That's right. That's and that's amazing. why a lot of people after they cry, they get that feeling of, ah, I feel better. Wow. That's quite amazing. That is, we have an amazing God. We have an amazing, amazing creator on all of those things. And here's another beautiful structure just that cornea itself. That's the, the round, clear part of your eye. And then you can see it here in this wonderful picture. It's shining and it's bright. The colored part behind it is your iris right there. But this cornea, in addition to protecting your eye, it focuses most of the light. It has a lot of pain fibers on it, which are absolutely necessary because if you get a wood chip in your eye, you are forced to stop. I know it hurts really bad. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and take care of it. This is one of the most sensitive parts on your entire body. And the Lord put those in there for a good reason. And that is so that you will stop what you're doing and take care of your eye when you need to. How important the eye is for everything that we do. So God is 
helping us by having this system, right, that, that you're going to automatically protect that because without the eye, we can't even see to find the food to put in our mouths. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And so that is just a wonderful, wonderful feature of that. In fact, it's, uh, it's got better clarity, as this picture shows here, than even optical grade glass in this hard contact lens. It's a wonderful clear thing and there's, there's just so much we could even talk about that in terms of the design on those kinds of things and of the eye in and of itself. But the cornea is completely devoid of blood vessels because it gets all of its nutrients from a fluid that is made in the back side of the eye. This is a wonderful picture on the side here and if someone were to look really close they could see those tiny little oil droplets which are made by the meibomian glands of the eyelid itself and we're going to look actually at this junction right there where that colored part of the eye meets the white part. We're going to look inside of the eye and we're going to see where that fluid is actually made. It's made in a structure right there called the ciliary body and that is going to filter your blood into a crystal clear ultrafiltrate. It's going to carry nutrients and oxygen all around in this area behind the eye and in, it's going to carry nutrients in this area behind the cornea. It's going to provide nutrition for the cornea and for the lens and then it's going to be absorbed through thousands of tiny little holes at just the right rate and just the right amount. Just absolutely incredible. Mm. And all of that is so that the back part of your eye, which is your retina, can collect those light, those little photons of light that we talked about, those little particles of energy, and it's going to act just like the back of a photographic camera in something that nobody can actually see, but they can see in a part of an eye once it's been cut open, and this is a person who dedicated their head to science, you can see this black part of the eye, this black pigment, which is going to act just like the back part of an old time camera, which we used to use, which is there to absorb all of the light so none of it gets reflected and scattered around. And light is going to hit one tiny little cell. This is a micrograph and it's been expanded. And all those little blue dots, this has been stained, are the nucleus of all little nerves carrying light from one of these photosensors at the back part of your eye. And there's about 250 million of them in each of your eye. And we all remember those, but this is a special light sensing cell, which was just basically discovered and researched within about the last 15 years. It's called a Mueller cell, and it helps carry light from the front part of the photo of sensors all the way to the back, all the way to the area without any distraction and distortion of it. And one researcher who was describing these Mueller cells, these funnel-shaped cells, said the increasing refractive index together with their funnel shape at nearly constant light guiding capacity make them ingeniously designed light collectors for the back of the eye. But the ones that we are always familiar with are not just the Mueller cells, but the ones that we learned about in high school, which are the cones and the rods. And right here is a picture of some of those cones and they can absorb three different colors, blues, reds, and greens. And they also enable you to see really, really fine details on that. And then the other one, which we learned about, were the rods. And this is a picture of what they look like when they're magnified. And this is a picture here that was taken in the 50s when people used a lot of black and white. They enable you to see light and dark. They enable you to see large, gross movements as well. And they're kind of around the periphery of the eye. And they enable you to have dark adjustment or, or dark adaptation to light. And this is what they look like when they're blown up really, really big. This is an artist's rendition of them. And I want to point out this one structure, this fine membrane, which has been folded up on top of itself, that is covered with a light sensitive molecule that is so sensitive, it can actually detect a single photon of light. Wow, that's fascinating. That's right. <laughs> and, yeah, just just incredible picture right here of an electron micrograph, just a tiny section of that cell, and that black folded membrane is what is detecting all of the light. 
I'm going to have to stop you right there, Randy. We have to take a break. You're going to want to stay with us and see what we have next. We hope you're enjoying Origins TV. It all started at Cornerstone Television in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've been producing new episodes for over 37 years now. We praise God for the success of the program and are excited to introduce you to Origins and to us. If you're interested in watching more episodes of Origins, you can find them on our YouTube page. Simply go to YouTube and search Cornerstone Television Network. Click the like and subscribe buttons, then you'll find the best episodes of Origins in our playlist. You can also visit our website at ctvn.org slash origins. One more way you can stay connected with us is to subscribe to our free monthly Hope Today newsletter, which you can do from our website. And if you have any questions, call us here at Cornerstone Television at 888-665-4483. We'd love to connect with you. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Origins. We're talking to Dr. Randy Galuza, who's been showing us some fascinating things about the human eye. Randy, we've been talking about the eye seeing and getting information and light, but, but we haven't gotten to information yet. We've gotten to sort of data. How do we get from all of that stuff out there that, okay, my eye picks up on and puts it in there, but where do I get to the point where that become something that I know. That's exactly right. Yeah, we haven't even got close to uh, actual information yet. Mm -hmm. These photo sensors that we're talking about here are actually just collecting the data. But I want to give you an idea of actually how much data is being collected. This is an older quote, but it gives us an idea. It, it's just a, a tremendous quote right here from this computer scientist who said to s simulate 10 milliseconds of the complete processing of even a single nerve from the retina would require the solution of about 500 simultaneous nonlinear differential equations 100 times and would take at least several minutes of processing time on a Cray supercomputer. Keeping in mind that there are 10 million or more such cells interacting with each other in complex ways, it would take a minimum of 100 years of Cray time to simulate what takes place in your eye several times a second. So our most intelligent scientist developing our most uh, sophisticated computer <laughs> would take a hundred years to do what these same people says happens completely by chance. Exactly, <laughs> and totally by chance. And the people who really mock the design of the eye, they're not really the people who really work with the eyes. This biophysicist right here from New York he gives us an idea. He says, yeah, for all these apparent flaws, and that is apparent flaws, the basic building blocks of human eyesight turn out to be practically perfect. Scientists have learned the fun that the fundamental units of vision, the photoreceptor, are not just good or great or fabulous at their job. They are not merely exceptionally impressive by the standards of biology. Photoreceptors operate at the outermost boundary allowed by the laws of physics which means they are as good as they can get, period. Wow. <laughs> that should put a slam dunk on all those people yes. who are really, really criticizing mm. the eye. Mm. But you asked me earlier about optic nerves and things, and this is actually a picture on the left-hand side of someone who donated their head to science, and the optic nerves are, are kind of cut right there, but it shows the bottom part where information it's actually data at this point. I almost misspoke there. It's really just data at this point. It's carried to the back part of your, uh, your head. So if you put your hand way back here, this is actually where you're seeing me right now. And the picture on the right-hand side of the screen shows that, that that data is carried in a highly organized way, but it gets flipped from side to side and upside down by the time it gets back to your brain. But your brain makes sense of it. How does that work? Yeah. How does all that happen? Well, data comes in and that information is sent off to various parts of your brain and it associates it with memories. Memories that you've built up over your lifetime and when the data pattern coming in matches the data you have in your memories, you actually see something. So, here's a real quick test. 
how fast do you see this? Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> You've processed all that. Yes. That's incredible. It's always astounded me that you can see so much, like the, the horizon so far away and all of that information, immediately we have it in our brains. Exactly. And it processes it and you match that information. Mm -hmm. about, how about this picture right here? Oh, I see it all, but I don't know what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah. That's because your brain is trying to make sense of that by mm -hmm. matching memory patterns here. That's actually a turtle with fake eyes on the back of its head. Uh -huh. Right there, you can now see the it now, yes. right, uh -huh. right. And that's how data... As soon as you recognize this pattern, then suddenly that data becomes, my mind knows exactly now what the data is. What it is. What that's it fascinating. Is. So, we're here, and I told you at the end of this talk that we were going to behold his beauty. And I ask you, I ask everybody who's listening, how many of you are gonna feel like saying, praise the Lord? I feel like saying it right now. Praise the Lord. The eye is just marvelous. It's, it's astounding. It's a wonder. It is. Well, Randy, we're going to have to stop right there. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Fascinating information. I hope you'll join us again sometime. I will. I'd love to. We began this program with the well-known scripture, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But as we saw, that's just part of the verse. The whole passage reads, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And when we consider the human eye in its complexity, its functionality, its design, its beauty, it should cause us to bow down and worship the God who made them. It's just one more example that we know what the Bible says is true and the proof, it's all around you. If you enjoy Origins, we sure could use your help to keep this creation television program on the air. Your support, both prayerfully and financially, make a big impact. So let's work together to reveal how awesome our Creator truly is. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this edition of Origins. For a DVD of this series, you can order online or send a $12 donation to cover shipping and handling and write to Origins Program Number 2301, Cornerstone Network, Wall, Pennsylvania. 15148. This presentation was made possible by the faithful prayers and financial support of you, our Cornerstone family.